People with developmental intellectual disabilities are born with a challenge, but they are also born, like everyone else in this world, with the opportunity to make a significant contribution. I like it here for one reason. All my friends stay here. The ARC, it's great, 60 years old, 60 years of things to do and realizing we're also there for a lifetime of supports. All I know is we just have more to do, you know. It doesn't matter how you look at the million dollars, we say that's only a beginning, kids. We're still on it, we have more to do. It started in a house in Walpole with a wonderful woman named Ruth Holman, who did what so many people might do in this world. They put an ad in the paper, looked to see if people wanted to get together to talk about supporting the needs of their children who lived at home with them with disabilities. My mom started this whole thing. And then my dad was a doctor when I came here a long time ago. Yeah. Your mom seems like a pretty amazing lady. Yeah, she is. Bruce, when he was born, the doctors were very negative about his joining the family. It was a group of quite a few people that had all decided that we didn't want to have our children brought up in a public institution. We would all get together and share. I do remember somebody standing up saying, you'll never guess what my child did today, and it was something very simple, mm -hmm. but it's, it was, we all could clap and be excited about it because we all had kids of the same dimension. My mom and dad were one of the incorporating families. They started to receive family support almost immediately. Back in those days, it was a very informal um, act. It was long before it was incorporated, it was just a really a family support network. This was a, a quality interaction where people were there and could support you and, and uh, you know, uh, make people feel that they had made a good choice. had to be very demanding. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it was looked at as courageous. We had really realized that there was a lot of work ahead of us when we were started. And we said, well, we have to, now that we got all these people doing the right thing and in the right place, we have, they have to have a place to live. They have to have places to go. And so this is only part of the game. The advocacy piece of the ARC is huge. We're on the forefront when there's legislation that needs to be passed when there's funding issues within the state. We're there to speak up for people that can't speak up for themselves. Over the years, on a national level, you're talking about public education 94-142 to make for integrated education. In our state of Massachusetts, the Ritchie lawsuit to deinstitutionalize institutions, the Boulay lawsuit to move people who are on waiting lists, 2,400 people on waiting lists at our ARC led by Bill Abel, along with Leo Sarkissian and Arc Mass, were significant in making that Boulay lawsuit happen. Our families were very much involved in that. To finally have brought this thing to, a, to a, an end, so to speak, and uh, shortly thereafter, both Laura and Mary, they were out and about looking at potential new homes. And within a period of time is when they found this place, and they now have a beautiful home. The Arc of South Norfolk has played historically, not just for its community, uh, but in shaping policy in Massachusetts and, of course, the nation, because the waiting list suit ended up having impact across the 50 states. Integration has always been the answer to so many problems in this world over segregation. Without a vigorous advocacy and without partnership, there's no way we can succeed. And families, we hope they'll understand it's a lifetime of support and it takes organizations that are willing to invest in advocacy for a lifetime. Families come to us in many different needs of life and what they need and what they get in this building and from this organization and from our amazing staff is a direction, is a calmness, is an understanding that we can help them go down the path of a quality of life for their child, just like they dream of a child who may not have a disability. Mary, Kathy, and Laura, and I. Yes, I. All these together. Or oh, plot together. They were living at home. 
they didn't have a lot of the activities or the interpersonal relations that came as a result of living in the house, having to interface with each other. The girls were getting all these different exposures as well as just the learning by experience that they got by being in the house. They are much more sophisticated. I got to clean the bathrooms on Tuesdays and dust my room on Mondays. Thursday and Mondays, I go to Zumba. How do you like working there? I love it. What do you love about it? My paycheck. I can remember my dad saying, you know, what's going to happen? Uh, uh, what is she going to be able to do? And uh, fortunately, he lived long enough. My mom looked, uh, lived long enough to see all of the wonderful things that she could do. We can rest a little bit easier knowing that Mary's going to be well cared for. You guys have any plans on moving out of the house anytime soon? No! <laughs> no! That's How awesome. Does it belong? It's wonderful yeah. what we can provide today to parents. You don't have to grow up under a cloud. We have to just break down those barriers by showing them that these folks can do the job. How does it feel when you get your paycheck? It feels good. And what do you like to spend your money on? L-O-V-E. 60 years old, that's a long time uh, for, a, for a nonprofit. We took our time in, in developing programs. When we did something, we did it right. And as a result, we're one of the premier agencies in the state. But it'd be great to put us out of business by making sure everything was inclusive and that everyone accepted people with disabilities as they are. I think we've gone from an organization that started with a group of families to being the leading resource center for people, for the towns, not as a place that stands out, but as a member of their community. Oh, yeah. What inspires us is to look forward. What other people can we help provide opportunities to improve their lives and opportunities to enhance the lives of their families? It is what moves us for the next 60 years. Several people have said to me things like, well, you know, I don't have a handicapped child, so it's really not my business. And I have to say it's everybody's business because they're all part of the human race and we're all wanting to grow together. And that doesn't make sense to say that I'm not going to be part of this. Of course you're going to be part of it because you can't help but be. That's how we keep growing, I think.